This is the first video in a series where we're going to see how to add autocomplete suggestions to an HTML input field using jQuery. We're going to start by seeing how to import jQuery. Then, in this video, we're going to see how to create a simple autocomplete with a predefined list. In later videos, we're going to see how to do autocomplete by pulling in data from a separate source, which in our case is going to come up through our DAO service and controller stack. In a video after that, we'll take a look at how we can differentiate between the value that a user sees and the value that a user types versus a key that gets submitted over to our page, more precisely over to our service. Nonetheless, what's an autocomplete? If you take a look at a form like we have here, you see several text boxes, which many decades ago was common just to have text input that anybody could type into. But we know a few things have changed in usability. Number one, we want to have some predefined lists so that we can control user input and have a better case for quality if we know that the user is selecting from a predefined list. Number two, we want to simplify, simplify the user's view of our application. So we don't want them to have to know what a plant name is. We want to suggest it for them based on what they're typing. If I start typing in Eastern here, you see I can keep typing and there are no suggestions. That's because we have not set up the autocomplete just yet. And that's our goal for this video. So let's take a look. This is a page that is HTML. Uh, I, I'm using Timeleaf and Spring Boot, but nonetheless, if you take a look at this, it's just plain old HTML. I have added several items to this page, including a jQuery CSS, a little styling widget that we have here, and then some JavaScript libraries. You can either link it as I have done, or you can add the jQuery libraries locally to your project. Probably a better idea to add them locally to your project. I just pasted these links in here just to speed up the video a little bit so we can get right into the action. Now, if you're trying to type this very quickly or make some notes, don't worry. I'll commit and push this to GitHub, and you're welcome to go out to my page and grab these and just copy and paste them for yourselves. Or like I say, download the jQuery libraries locally. As a matter of fact, I just got this from the jQuery web page, and there's a link there that allows you to download the libraries locally, or you can take a look at the examples and you can put together the URL as I did, but nothing really magic. I just went out to jQuery site and grabbed this. Let's scroll down for a moment. And what I want to do is tie something on this page to the look and feel that we were just looking at. So you see plant name here is a label and above it we have plant. Let's take a look at our source and you see that we have a span column here called plant name. Underneath that we have input type equals text. This is where we want to tie the autocomplete. So the first thing we need to do is give this a unique identifier. So I, I say ID equals, we can call it anything that's a legal CSS identifier. I'll go with plant underscore name. And I have a feeling I'm going to need this later. So I'll either remember it or maybe I'll copy it. But just a simple CSS identifier or HTML identifier. Now let's roll back up to the head section right after the, uh, if we go from line eight to line 16, that's what I pasted to get the jQuery libraries. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new script element. So script, and then we'll say type equals, and then we'll say a text slash JavaScript, just like so. And close quote, just double check my spelling. We get the close tag and we're in good shape. Within this, we're going to make a JavaScript function. So I will say dollar sign, and then open curly, whoops, sorry, uh, open paren rather. And it automatically gives me the pr close pr paren and then function. And then open and close paren one more time. And then open curly, close curly. So a little bit of funny syntax there, but nonetheless, it's what we need to do to get this done. Within this, I'm going to say dollar sign, open paren, double quote, and then pound symbol or hash symbol if you prefer. And then guess what? We're gonna paste in plant name. So you see, it's just like a CSS selector. It's saying, okay, I need to find something that has the ID plant name, and that's what I'm going to wire up and autocomplete to. So we're grabbing a reference to this plant name, and then we simply say dot autocomplete, just like so. And then open paren again, and open curly and close curly. We're going to see this quite a few times. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and terminate these ones that have created with a semicolon. At this point, it's probably a good idea to just give a quick check and make sure that your curlies and your parentheses are in balance. If they're out of balance, it will be very challenging. Within this autocomplete, I'm going to say source colon, and then we'll say square bracket, which indicates an array in JavaScript, essentially. So square bracket, and then inside of this Eastern red bud, 
and then close uh, close the double quote comma and then double quote eastern white pine and then close double quote and comma and then double quote whoops one more time and let's say eastern red cedar and we could keep going on and on like so but we have at least three things that have the word eastern after that we can say min length colon two which means start the autocomplete only after the user has typed two characters so you see we have a predefined list and a minimum length of two now with that let's go ahead and restart and let's see what this looks like when it's running the application is started now so i go back and i refresh my page now for plant name we'll clear that out we have some old data in there and i start typing ea and take a look when I hit the second letter, it gave me this autocomplete list. So E A S T E R N. Now let me start typing red, R E D. And you notice that it's filtering down the list automatically. Now B U D. And there we go. We've typed enough to select Eastern Redbud. So in just a few lines, we've been able to set up this autocomplete. A couple of important things to consider. First of all, notice that we are starting with square bracket and ending with square bracket, and only the autocomplete names themselves are in quotes. If we do this, then jQuery knows that we have embedded the list of items that we want to suggest with an autocomplete. On the other hand, if we put the source in quotes, it would assume that's a URL that's going to give us a list of autocomplete values. A little nice that way because the, that list can be variable. So we'll cover that in the next video, but I do want to point out that you do not want to put this entire array in quotes. If you do that, jQuery will be confused and jQuery will think that everything in quotes is a URL. So be careful. Don't do that. Uh, do it as I had it originally. Another thing to consider is I've hard coded these values in. And if you're doing a static HTML page, that's perfectly acceptable. You can do it that way. If you're doing a dynamic page though, we could have something like a JSON feed like I have here. We could read that in in a service layer, which we'll do in a later video. But take a look at how many of these we have. We could easily have 5,000 or so different plant names. You see here I have about 4,000 and change, but could very quickly get up to yeah, almost 5,000. That would be unrealistic to put in a single HTML page because it's quite heavy to load that much, where if you call it as it's needed, then the page has an opportunity to load without loading all that data. You're only calling the autocomplete when the user actually gets there, which is after page load, going to speed up the page load a little bit more efficiently. So we will cover that in our next video, but to give you a hint what it would look like, if I were to take this away, like so, and I were to say something like, uh, plant list dot pl something like that it would look on the server for something called plant list pl or maybe even just an endpoint called plant list it would look on the server side for this thing called plant list and it would use that as its source data so some more things that we need to consider there but that's okay we will cover that in the next video so i hope this video has been helpful and i look forward to seeing you in that next video thank you